Hello, hope everyone's doing good today. We're going to be looking at a new pen of mine, which is the Stilo Steel version of the Opus 88 Colorado Demonstrator. I've already opened this box, but I'm, you know, you can treat it as like, a, like an unboxing if you want. So basically the, the pen comes in a box like this. It's just branded with uh, the, the shop's name uh, up here. And as you note, this is a, actually a limited edition pen. So inside the cardboard box, you get an uh, inner box. It says that uh, Opus 88 has, a, has been around since 1977. Uh, and opening up the box, you get uh, a card with the Stilo Steel. Uh, you know, that's where the shop is if you happen to be in Rome. And you get the Opus 88 uh, instruction guide. So how do you use an eyedropper system? Uh, basically, you uh, kind of unscrew the cap, unscrew the, the middle part of the section and the body. Afterwards, you use the included eyedropper down here to kind of fill up the pen. So um, we're going to so basically what the, what the pen comes with would be the, that eyedropper which was mentioned earlier on and the pen itself. So as I mentioned, it's not an unboxing because I already opened it uh, you know, some time back. Uh, but we're going, we are actually going to fill up the pen and I'll show you how I fill up the pen. Uh, a little bit different from what the instruction says. So basically this is the pen. Uh, so the limited edition part of it is the fact that it's a numbered edition pen. So I typically try to avoid limited edition pens because they are typically priced a little bit higher than the standard edition. And I'm, I'm always wondering, uh, is it worth it to get a limited edition pen uh, just for the number? But in this case, it I feel it's worth it because uh, price the price of this pen is about 89 euros, about 100, um, 130 Singapore dollars or about 96 uh, US dollars. And it's not that far away, probably like a few dollars, less than $10 away from the standard pen. So I thought that it was kind of all right to spend that little extra for, for to get a limited edition in this particular case. So taking a look at the pen, you get the, you know, black finial, uh, you get the clip, and incidentally, I, I can actually put up uh, all the Opus 88, some of the Opus 88 models out there on, on the page uh, right now, and uh, my favorite model of the Opus 88 range is actually the, the this Col Colorado Demonstrator, uh, precisely because the clip is what appeals to me the most. The rest of the pens have a little bit uh, too fussy of a clip design. Um, that's just my opinion. And I like, I, I particularly like this clip because it reminds me of how the pilot clips are designed. It is a pretty secure clip. And opening up the cap, you can very clearly see that there's an inner uh, ink uh, protection or the, 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 the mechanism to kind of keep the ink from drying out. And down on the cap, you, you see the words Opus 88, and you also see the branding of Stilo e Steel, which is a nice touch. One thing which a lot of people mention is the number of turns it takes to open up this pen. I mean, I feel it, but I don't think it's excessive number of turns, is my opinion. The cap, incidentally, is very, very light. So moving on to the main part of the pen, you get the, the body, which has this beautiful, uh, I think it's acrylic swirl. Uh, the pen itself is made of a resin of some sort, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, but this, the fact that for this limited edition model, um, you have this swirling effect and every pen, as far as I can tell, has a different swirl, which is just a nice touch, right? And uh, the bottom of the pen, as I showed you earlier on, has the serial number down here or the, the release number. You can open up the rear um, part of the pen to kind of let some of the, 
you know, to release some of the gap between the, the plug and the, the main uh, section that will allow more ink to flow through uh, through the nib. Um, and this part of the pen, when I pull it out, is made out of ebonite, right? You can actually feel it when you push the, this plunger to and fro that it's slightly rubbery in feel, right? Incidentally, when I got this pen, all of the, um, you know, the, the, the screw threads, I actually lubricated uh, them with a bit of silicon grease. They were a little bit rough um, out of the box. So opening up this section down here, you can actually see the, that plunger, which I was mentioning earlier on down here. And this is where you would actually use the eyedropper to kind of fill up the ink, which we'll do that later on. And down here you get, um, this is the area which gets plucked up by, by this little plunger down there. You get an O-ring down here and you can probably make out that there's another O-ring inside uh, the nib unit down there to kind of prevent leakage that way as well. So like I mentioned, um, uh, that, was the, that was the body. So looking at the section, you get an opus, sorry, a stilo, stilo is steel, is steel uh, nib. It's not the same. It's a Jowo number six nib. However, the design is pertaining to this particular model. I just brought up a standard Jowo nib and you can tell that uh, this particular limited edition nib is in, without that, that uh, scroll work. Uh, it makes for a very clean looking nib, which I like. Uh, the nib which I bought for this particular pen was actually a fine. Uh, and in terms of section, this section down here, I can measure it right now um, while I have my calipers down here. In the middle of the, of the section, it's roughly ki kind of slightly less than 12 millimeters, which means it's a very, very comfortably sized section. So I'm going to uh, ink up the pen with Sailor Blue Black. And I'll just show you how I actually do the, the inking uh, of, of this style of pen, right? And lots of times uh, people tell you to fill up the, the ink like so, basically take a little bit of ink uh, from, the, from the ink bottle, drop it into here. However, one thing which I need to get some tissue, just give me a minute. One thing which I always like to do uh, is to kind of prime the feet a little bit. Um, if you kind of uh, follow the instructions, what they will tell you to do is kind of leave the pen for a while and let the, the, the ink kind of make its way down to the nib. But what I like to do to kind of kickstart uh, for a pen, any pen basically that fills up from the back rather than the nib from the nib is kind of to insert the nib into the ink to kind of start off the flow that way. This way you won't have to do that waiting uh, for the, the ink to kind of make its way down. And I'm gonna wipe off the nib off camera a little bit. And let me clear up my desk and I'll show you a little bit of writing from this pen. Incidentally, that nib unit, you can actually just insert one of these Pilot Parallel and I've actually tried uh, the, the Pilot Parallel nib. It fits very, very nicely um, into that, that area down there. However, just bear in mind that the Pilot, Pilot Parallel um, nib writes very very wet so it might not be the best if you want um, you know depending on the type of italic look that you want you might find that the flow is a little bit wet at least it was a little bit wet for my taste so i'm going to take my um, paper down here which is my Hurlitz, uh notepad 
And I just want to give a little bit of measurements while we are at it as well. The last measurement, which the second measurement, which I always want to get for my pens is actually the length of the pen from the tip of the nib all the way to the back. Uh, and it's roughly um, it's roughly about that 13.8 mark which means it's a very very you know it's relatively large or long uh, pen so starting off the ink flow Not sure how, how whether or not it's, it's with prostrophe or not. And this is the Opus 88 demonstrator in fine. I might raise the table a little bit more because it's a bit, still a little bit high for me. So it's a very, very smooth, it's, a, it's um, when I got this pen, uh, or rather the, the nib out of the box, there was a little bit of tuning that I had to do. Basically the tines were just slightly out of alignment. Once After I did the, the nib uh, tuning, the, the pen writes very, very smoothly. Um, as you probably, okay, and I, I have actually made it run out of ink. Um, as you probably would know for a Joe nib, right? Um, probably need to do some more priming. For a typical Joe nib, it, it's not very, uh, it's probably a very stiff nib. It's not the most bouncy nib out there. So in terms of any type of line variation, I. I don't think you'll get much of it out of the box, right? However, the nib is pretty smooth, right? And this is not indicative of the wetness because I haven't, uh, the ink hasn't made its way all the way down here, but based on my experience, it's a pretty wet nib, right? So, I mean, in terms of the writing performance and the feel in the hand, like I mentioned earlier on, due to the size of the pen and the, the, the way the section is designed, this is an extremely comfortable pen. Uh, ink capacity is pretty huge. I'm not too sure what the exact capacity of the of the uh, this area is. Probably over two milliliters or roughly two milliliters is my guess. Uh, and generally, for the price that you're paying, uh, you're paying around that. Um, like I mentioned, around that 100 US dollar mark, and you're getting very, very decent size pen with a number six uh, nib. And I think that kind of represents pretty good value. Uh, in general, Opus 88 pens, I feel, represent pretty good value for, you know, for the person who's kind of trying to get the best performance out of a fountain, uh, best price to performance ratio out of a fountain pen. So you might want to consider this pen. Uh, I certainly think it's a it's a very nice pen, um, and you know maybe give me your thoughts in terms of alternative uh, Joe number no. six pens that I can consider uh, next time. I will actually put out a comparison of all the Joe number no. six nibs that I have in my collection to kind of show you. Uh, the various line widths and so on, and look out for that in a in a future video. Um, however, you know that brings me to the end of the video, and I'll see you in the next time. Thanks. Bye bye.